Greetings, dear friends. We gather in a circle in the day following the new moon of Cancer to continue our work with the group meditation for the common good. For the last two weeks, we've been holding our group focus on topic evoking the Christ consciousness in humanity. We had opportunity to meditate together during the full moon time, invoking the vision and the guidance. And we've been holding this focus for two weeks between the full moon and the new moon. And today we bring together seeds of thought forms that emerge through this reflection to offer those into the group chalice to be magnetized and radiated as thought forms to humanity, supporting it on its path to manifesting the new civilization based on the principles of freedom, brotherhood, and common good. Thank you for joining the circle. So let us start our work. And I'm inviting Birgit to sound the statement of purpose of our ongoing work. Thank you, Alexander, and greetings all. Our purpose is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through group conversation and group meditation, which focuses the power of joint intention for the common well-being of humanity and Earth's overall planetary life. It enables recognition and manifestation of spiritual principles in all fields of human life and activity, and magnetizes thought forms of solution, and supports practical actions that lead to the advancement of humanity. And let us do our naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Burkita. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name, where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today, as each one of us calls ourselves 
into this circle. Alexander. I'm Alexander Ilchuk. I'm calling from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome. Birgitta. Birgitta Helena Rasmussen, calling in from Denmark. Welcome. Andrea. Hi everyone, this is Andrea Russ and I'm calling in today from Fishers Island, New York in the United States. Welcome. Aneta. This is Aneta Lüffler calling in from Denmark. <clears throat> Welcome. Cynthia. Hello, this is Cynthia Clayton calling from uh, the Smoky Mountains, North Carolina, USA. Welcome. Thank you. Darcy. Greetings, everyone. This is Darcy Sessions calling from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome. Jillian. Hello everyone, this is Julian Douglas from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Helen. Hello, this is uh, Helen Franklin that I'm calling in also from the UK near London. Welcome. John. Hello, this is John Sedevy joining from Furman, Missouri, USA. Welcome. Judy. Hello, Judy Harrison from Brewster, Mass, USA. Welcome. Katya. Hi, Katya Kaufman, New York. Welcome. Kiki. Kiki Bill, calling from London, England. Thanks. Welcome. Sarah. Uh, Sarah, please unmute yourself. Hello, I'm Sarah from Forest Row in England. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala the hierarchy and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Alexander. Thank you, friends. We open now the floor for sharing that would prepare us for our meditation. On the screen, you see the questions that Birgitta offered us to reflect on in this cycle, and they help us to guide our in our process but not limit the topic as the topic is very vast so 
I invite us to, as we share and listen to each other, try to recognize the most resonant ideas that could become the seeds for magnetization and radiation through our me meditation. And I will also put now the link to our community impressions board into the chat. It's uh, our place where we could share during this period of two weeks since the uh, full moon. Uh, here is the link. And, uh, the floor is open. Please unmute yourself when you're ready to share. Uh, this is Judy, so I will start. Uh, currently, I'm reading a novel called The Oba Story. I'm sure many people have heard of it. It really looks at um, the livingness of trees and more specifically of forests and how these beings really communicate with each other. And there's a line in the story which says exponential growth inside a finite system leads to collapse, but people don't see it, so the authority of people is bankrupt. And I've been thinking about personal authority because with the shift of the nodal axis into Aries, the focus now is looking at people responding from their inner authority uh, rather than what they hear from the outside. And that inner authority is really one soul. But there has to be a consciousness of what's happening in order for our inner authority to be stimulated. And I think now, um, as we look at the world situation, um, the plus is that when you see various groups, you know that their inner authority or their consciousness, their awareness is starting um, to really be stimulated so that unity or Christ consciousness um, is, is happening, it's cohering. There's a, a sense uh, through groups that are working all around us that that understanding of the need for unity is what we need as our next step forward. Um, in terms of 
uh, the group that I'm working with, which is the economy of the one life that looks at the sustainable development goals. Uh, right now, there are, there are many groups that are supporting that. There's something called the uh, Thought Leadership Synergy Circle, which has scientists and uh, those uh, thinkers that really are advanced in their understanding, looking at unity and, and positioning themselves in such a way that they will have a voice within the UN. Uh, this group is supported by Lucis Trust. It's supported by many uh, spiritual organizations, uh, Unity International. And so when you start looking, that inner authority is coming through because those who are in a position are beginning to respond. And so I do see Christ consciousness uh, moving at this point in time. Um, and I think uh, it's very timely, especially as the astrology supports it. So thank you. I'll follow that because last week I had the opportunity to join into the Unitive Cluster at the United Nations and it was extraordinary and what struck me most and I think is part of what is beginning to blossom is the courage to speak one's truth that is happening within higher and higher institutions that it really is about courage. It's about reaching out with what we know and feeling brave enough to explain that to others, others who may not have the same understanding that we've developed, but to begin to speak of it as the truth that it is. So that same group, was very impressive to me because this is part of the leadership at the United Nations and they are recognizing that what is missing at the United Nations is love and that they are willing to take love and other intangible aspects that we hold very near and dear as those, as those that are soul qualities and bring them into the conversation and bring them into the the general awareness, because these are entities in and of themselves, and they are more than just words and feelings, and bringing those out loud is a very powerful thing. I can uh, got them. Kaufman, New York. 
um, it's interesting to me because when I start pondering, not pondering, but the connecting with this, with the questions, to me it was a deeper inquiry on uh, what, what, what really, what is consciousness? And the more I pondered on that, you know, the more I realized that there is a clear distinction between the mind and consciousness. And well, our mind, even our group mind, tends to tends to analyze to explore, to give authority to something, to take authority away. When we look at from the prism of consciousness, it is almost like a direct way to what it is for us, how we relate into that. And when you look from the point of view of consciousness, it, that actually allows to see both ways, those pairs of opposites, this discrimination, the separation of one entity or form or phenomena into two or more, but basically two sides of that and the mind discriminates but consciousness allows to see that discrimination as a as part of this process of the mind developing the relation with the oneness which as soon as you, you know trying to relate to oneness then the duality do not exist anymore. Some way Tibetan says that, I don't remember really where, but he says, well, I'm separating this. Is he talking about something? And he says, I'm separating that only for the purpose of a better understanding. So we're talking about the mind, the understanding requires some time for a period of time, sometimes, I don't know, very long time, probably, the, the separation for the, for the better understanding of phenomena or whatever it is the mind is exploring. But consciousness does not need that. It can do all three. It can see as one, and it can see through the lens of the mind how the mind sees it, but it never... Um, is mistaken <laughs> that this is the process of the mind, the thought forms and thinking and and um, so when I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about that, and what I see in the end is it is to see how it relates to my consciousness, to, to my experience to my amount. To say that something is lacking love is, um, I think, you know, the when I'm thinking that I'm lacking love, I'm thinking that, you know, more accurate thing would be to say that I'm lacking skills or resources to manifest love which is in me, outside of me. And, uh, yeah. So, but consciousness doesn't have this problem. Mind does how to manifest. And if it's manifested in the right way or in the wrong way, acceptable, not acceptable,
I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me well? It's uh, not a very good quality. Uh, here you cut. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's um, I'm sorry. I was using the headphones. Yeah, I'm, I, I I deeply apologize. Uh, uh, Cynthia asked, maybe you can summarize what you said before that because it was difficult to perceive. I'm sorry. Um, and thank you for for, for alerting me. The thing is, to me, there there is several way that we um, use the word like the, the understanding of consciousness and mind. And when we look through the lens of mind, we have the duality, the right way, the wrong way. And uh, but the right and the wrong depends on the goal. But consciousness allows to relate to the goal and to see how things are related to the goal as I see it. And uh, at the same time, consciousness allows to truly see how I'm related, not in, in on, on all the planes. So we're talking about Christ consciousness. This is a full connection. Like not partial, but full connection. And I think that we, as uh, disciples, as people who serve, as people who learn, who search, who study, we, it is important for us to see these things in connection to our relation to those things, rather than looking through the mind if it's right or wrong. Accurate, not accurate. It's more like what it, what it means for us individually, what it means for us as a group. And then within group consciousness or Christ consciousness, different thinking is allowed. Different uh, view is allowed. And different path to the task, to the goal is allowed. Just because really the mind allows many, many things, you know, including mistakes to be made, you know, on the path to experiencing of experiencing life and building and creating and transforming. I'm sorry, maybe it's, I'm a little bit, you know, vague. But in reality, I would like to stress the connection with actually the most practical aspect of our life as disciples, as, as students, as service, because it is our individual responsibility to adapt, modify, and qualify. And doing that using group consciousness, Christ consciousness, it is a much easier task in the end because that allows love to be. Even if we don't have the skills or tools to manifest it. Because group heart contains that principle. <laughs> group mind contains that principle. Thank you. This is an interesting discussion uh, about the consciousness and mind and um, Christ consciousness and love and, and everybody who has spoken so far and what came to me immediately when um katya was just uh speaking of the christ consciousness um and allowing things uh i just read something um that said 
uh, that we should not kill out desire. Killing out something will just allow it to arise again. The true change happens when it's transmuted, um, not killed out. And that immediately that thought came to me about um, what consciousness truly is. Consciousness allows for the transmutation. The mind thinks of different things, um, different views, different paths. And what the Christ consciousness does, it allows all of it and synthesizes it through love, which is always present. It's not something we need to find. It's not something that's missing. That's who we are and what we are. We're love and we're light. So it's about remembering who we are and, and recognizing who we are and what we are. And that the consciousness is the synthesizer. That's that you have spirit, matter, and consciousness, though. That's the Trinity. And the consciousness is what synthesizes the spirit and matter. And uh, Christ consciousness coming from love which is what we are, we are love transmuting and synthesizing spirit and matter. So I just thank you. I thank everybody for bringing all their points up because it all synthesized together for me. Thanks. Indeed, it's a very interesting uh, direction for this reflection on consciousness. Um, there is another meeting that's happening in parallel, and uh, it's the Esoteric United Nations, and they reflect there on the law of love. And uh, I've been participating until the beginning of our meeting there, listening. And it's uh, interesting that you have so eloquently just synthesized, Tracy, uh, what's been shared so far at that meeting. And in a way, yes, there is there is a law of uh, attraction, which is law of love and law of repulsion. And uh, transformation happens when we allow synthesis. And for some reason, the, a thought came into my mind about um, uh, Inquisition fires in the Middle Ages who were trying to fight heresies. And we know how it's ended up and what it brought up. So I think in a certain way, we're in the new age of heresies and it's important not to fight heresies with the uh, same methods of repulsion uh, that the Inquisition used, but allow different views to emerge and be, and especially when it's happening within the group space, within the group format, to be transformed and transmuted and the group could elevate to a higher level. It's somewhat, uh, maybe not, maybe not different topic uh, than the consciousness in the humanity. It's related to consciousness in the group. What is the group consciousness? But it's all um, yeah, important aspects of allow, allowing and Christ consciousness to emerge, recognizing that it might, the first signs of the emergence of Christ consciousness might look like uh, something else. But that's, yeah, it's the principle of freedom that allows different ways to manifest and uh, evolution will do its own work.
um, short um, addition to what you said, Tracy, is uh, in uh, Esoteric Astrology on chapter on Taurus. Uh, Tibetan says that Buddha came to humanity to help with the aspect of desire, to teach about the desire and what it can bring you when it is unenlightened and how to reach the enlightenment or desire. And um, Christ came to teach the transmutation of desire into aspiration. That's the goal according to one of the goals at least for humanity to transmit the transmutation of desire into aspiration there's a small little chapter in uh, is it our killing about that i think page 348 um it's very little how the transmutation of desire is done. It's worth, worth looking into, I think, for all of us. And Taurus is the more point of turning. It's just a um, earth triangle. It's the triangle of actually evolution of desire which is very important as well for humanity because it's our element we are related deeply with that and Virgo is Christ consciousness the beginning of Christ consciousness which is also part of the surf triangle in Capricorn. So that is a very interesting chapter in esoteric astrology on Taurus. Thank you. Well, these are most excellent questions, and I am going to uh, print them off and be contemplating them for a while. But what comes to me uh, first is uh, the second question, what can we do to nurture and empower the Christ consciousness in humanity? And what struck me is yeah, there's a lot of things we can do, and we all are uh, doing what we can. But to me, it's more of a question of 
of being um, the best way to nurture and empower others is to be the Christ consciousness. And I know I'm talking to the choir here, but when you are, and when you only see others the way that Jesus or another Christ would see others, you're using those eyes to see with, your heart is seeing, you're seeing with your heart, not your eyes, then being that, uh, love is such a catching thing. Uh, when you love other people, uh, even if they're uh, very staunch and uh, and don't appear to be receptive, there's something in that vibration that affects them on some level. So I used to try to really affect people with my words. I still do. Um, but I'm realizing what they need is our presence. Uh, the stronger we can be in that way, that will help the most. And then I feel there needs to be a new language that will bridge uh, those of us that walk in more than one world, but just just the word Christ consciousness, and we know you know what we're talking about. Um, there is a lot of movement in more secular fields, uh, even in like mind science with you know, epigenetics and stuff, but people are realizing that, uh, you know, even if their world is secular, they're realizing that uh, things like kindness and gratitude and forgiveness, they're, they're noticing their own thoughts more. They're noticing how those things affect them and they, they bring them happiness. And so if, Christ consciousness is seen as the optimal human condition, the divine human, the bridge, then everyone would want to know how do I cultivate that? And it might not be because of their love for humanity to begin with, and that would be okay. Because as they're going, they will you know, learn that uh, by being more of a Christed person, it is going to bring them more happiness and change their world tremendously. So I, you know, at core, am esoteric, mystical, spiritual. I was born on Rumi's birthday. I write, you know, ecstatic poetry, but I'm also, um, uh, you know, in the field of positive psychology. And if we can, uh, and especially with younger people, they're in this meaning crisis. They don't, they don't have any meaning anymore. And of course, COVID you know, prove the entire world is suffering mentally. And I just feel if they can find some practices that they can celebrate life, love life again, love themselves again, just for trying, just for taking one more good step. You know, if they can have joy uh, and, and hope, uh, they will become Christ. So uh, I don't know, that's just kind of couple of things that came to me but these are really a lot of consideration thank you who created these questions
I just want to add one quick thing, just that the conversation about consciousness and about desire is, is so interesting because we, we elevate our sense of desire into aspiration, but that's what we all do. We use our creative imaginations to co-create consciousness. And that's a very powerful opportunity that, that we all recognize, but that will, I think, be explored more deeply as we recognize the expansiveness and vastness of consciousness, which what Judy alluded to in that incredible book she's reading, which is The Understory, and a lot of other very scientific research that's coming out that now really is focusing on the larger consciousness between and in between and of, of all kingdoms. That spoke, speaks to the plant kingdom, the vegetable kingdom. We know it a little more familiarly in the animal kingdom with pets, but it's, it's the mineral kingdom too. And that consciousness isn't just humanity. It is not just within the human being. It is so vast. And, and, and I think as we gain that scientific fifth ray opportunity and expand all of our minds to recognize consciousness, we will be led into a greater understanding of the power of prayer, which is the use of positive, loving consciousness to reach to other kingdoms in support, because most of us have a sense of believing that, and there is research to show that prayer and positive prayer really does impact others. But if that's the case, then at some point, we will realize that the negative thoughts that there is a power that comes through the more fearful thoughts as opposed to the loving thoughts that travel within that consciousness powerfully as well. So I just think that the whole conversation of consciousness is, is blooming on the earth. It really, really is. And that will bring us to greater awareness of how we impact each other and how we are actually all one. Uh, hello, Julian here. Um, I'm just thinking that what most people want is comfort, happiness and security. And the present current world situation is not providing it. And that is becoming very obvious to them. And they will look for other ways. And we would We've been told on more than one occasion that suffering is good for the soul and suffering takes us forward. And maybe they'll realize that the way forward is to turn towards goodness and kindness and cooperation. Thanks. I'd like to just add some thoughts about um, <clears throat> the animal kingdom that I've been reading about this week. I was looking um, to write an article about uh, animals uh, related to healing. But earlier somebody said how we need to trans 
transform or transmute the emotions in order to, to clarify and allow Christ consciousness. And the animal kingdom represents the emotional or the solar plexus center of our, our planet. And the bit I, I found quite interesting apropos what we're speaking of, um, interesting was in, in telepathy. And it was saying how our building the bridge between humanity and hierarchy, which is a, about allowing that Christ consciousness to come into humanity. It's about the, the reappearance or the re, re-emergence of Christ consciousness, how it is related to our allowing the animal kingdom to move into the human kingdom to help them build that bridge in bringing mind. So it seems we're bringing the buddhic into mind for, for the animals where we can help them bring mind into their emotional nature, especially as someone said with the uh, more domesticated animals. But I, I have come across this, this idea of this bridge building um, being simultaneous and needing to go on at the same time. So we have the bridge from the animal to the human linked to the bridge from the human to hierarchy. Thank you. This conversation reminds me that um, the wisdom teachings uh, have told us that matter is only temporary and that form and matter only exist as long as they are installed by consciousness to fulfill a certain purpose. And if the consciousness is withdrawn, then form and matter cease to exist. So this consciousness is so important. And quantum physics is verifying now what the wisdom teachings have been telling us about this consciousness um, through their observer effect. You know, the observer, the one who is observing changes, can change all sorts of things. And when you think of it as humanity as a whole, um, everybody's observing things, you know, at a different way, just kind of like a, you know, some of those bugs that have several different eyes, you know, just and then they blend them all into one to try and see everything. Um, our observer effect right now seems to be uh, very interesting when you look at how humanity is starting to gather together in that unity to see the whole, which is uh, yeah, it's kind of Kind of cool. <laughs> Thanks.
another idea that comes in reflecting on this topic evoking the Christ consciousness and humanity is related to the word evoking. Evocation is who is evoking and uh, I recognize that it's uh, that uh, we as, as a part of the new group of old servers we are part of that evoking presence and the new group of old servers as uh, the Ajna center of humanity to a certain degree has a double function of course there are a lot more to that but it's invocation and evocation we invoke the higher forces we invoke hierarchy and we evoke humanity it's interesting that in the human body uh, ajna center has two main petals each of which of course consists of multiplicity of petals uh, uh, but two main petals forming kind of this infinity sign and so it big field for reflections and inquiries what is oh how we evoke how that evocation call should be sounded in the most efficient way and someone in the beginning said uh, that yeah it's by setting an example becoming being the radiant center of christ consciousness ourselves to be soul present soul And uh, earlier last month, when uh, we were at the solstice period, there was a keynote offered in relation to that vocation because it was the uh, middle point in the seven year cycle related to the festival weeks of uh, the new group of all service the impact week that happens every seven years the last one was in 2019 the next one will be in december 2026 and so standing this that solstice point in the exact middle of this seven year cycle it was a re uh, ref reflection on how we what do we do for the next three and a half years and how we prepare the world servers and humanity to that potent opportunity of the impact week thank you Uh, I'd like to take your thoughts, Alexander, on invocation and evocation um, and just take it a little further. There's a, a scientist that is in this group of uh, world leaders. Uh, her name is Jude Caravan. And she uh, 
basically said that a spattering of light in the collective, i.e. those who have Christ consciousness, with each surge with a meditative group, it really uh, changes reality because the quantum model uh, has it that that surge alters the quantum wave structure, creating new harmonics, a new octave of consciousness. Uh, and so basically she's putting forward from a scientific point of view exactly what it is that we are doing in terms of invocation and evocation. And it really is the science that is kind of proving uh, the etheric uh, reality of uh, our connection and also the idea that love, if you will, or light can alter the structure. So I think it's just so heartening to know that there are these folks that are putting it into language that uh, can be understood uh, by a larger community than the esoteric community, but it really is about invoking and evoking. So thank you. On those lines, I was thinking that um, groups such as this are already creating a foundation, a lighted house, and as we work, the light we bring in will be given out to people, and so we will be helping the uh, bringing in of Christ consciousness in humanity. Hello everyone, this is Darcy. This is a broad and deep, deep um, place we go in Cancer, part of the Cardinal Cross. And the development of the intuitional awareness, the Christ consciousness, is a consummation that brings a greater awareness and is demonstrated and tested, we see in the labors of Hercules, where the teacher asks that uh, Hercules be given the tests that which will invoke his wisest choice. And so he's sent out and he must decide which voice of all the many voices will arouse the obedience of his heart. And the tests of great simplicity upon the outer plane that will help awaken on the inner side of life, the fullness of his wisdom and the rightness of his power to choose. The fourth test is in the conditions laid upon us in cancer and we learn to invoke our Christ consciousness through the development of our intuitional awareness. To choose the wisest choice. And what this does is assist in the awakening and functioning activity of the love petals of the egoic lotus. And wisdom is part of the dual nature of love. So in this test of cancer, 
Hercules is confronted with the need to decide as to which of the many pairs of op opposites he will attend to. In the ever increasing solidity and difficulty in his demonstration of wisdom and service. And also recognizing, growing in our capacity, our Christ consciousness, our intuitional awareness to recognize and respond to the one voice, that clearing call of the soul, a voice which though it be seldom heard among many, is the voice that we, um, the voice of the silence, that inner intuitional um, soul group, Christ consciousness that resides and that we learn to hear in the obedience of the heart. And we become what it says, the Tibetan says, is that we must be tested and to learn to become um, a conformity, agreeableness, and obedience to the life expression of divinity, a great simplicity for the son of man who is also the son of God. is still the simplicity of the soul opens the door to Shambhala through cancer in relation to its opposite Capricorn in relation to Aquarius. So it's an awakening and a testing that awakens the inner side, which will demonstrate the fullness of wisdom and the rightness of his power. It brings in the energies of the booty and then merges the Atma booty manas of the inner spiritual person. So compassion and wisdom. And the presiding one in Hercules task said that he had to do it again and again and again. The dough that he sought, the sacred dough, is in the holy place close to the heart of God. And likewise, in the hour of need, close to my heart. So, development of the intuition, the patience, the intuition, the Christ consciousness that where eventually this, the group consciousness becomes our motivating of reincarnation and cancer, of where we seek to sacrifice again in a place and way of joy in order to assist all the lives of creation in our return home to the Father's house in Capricorn. We build a lighted house and emerge from the dark prison of matter. Tom shared the comment in the chat. Um, Tom, if you would like to voice it, you unmute it now. Otherwise, I can just read. No comment needed. Here's what is going to happen. Maitreya has brought a new cosmic principle 
not yet known on the earth and these cosmic principles of synthesis will center mankind in the new hologram of relationship and bring the next presentation in the ageless wisdom. This revelation will synchronize and focus the will of separate men into a new consciousness of group identification. This revelation is what all men wait for and will uh, solve the problem of thought to the purpose and synchronization will God and the divine plan. This is the power station of Maitreya, the power quantum of synthesis, as is predicted and anticipated by decay and esoteric psychology. This solves the riddles which have perplexed mankind until this event, the reappearance of the Christ, and it will work in all beings from the most receptive, those who are building the Antakarana, on down to those who will also, as it is the center from which the will of God is known, that is the third station after the first two. Thank you, Tom. It's been a rich sharing today and the last two weeks. So let us now prepare for the meditation, which uh, Birgit will, uh, will lead us into. And in this meditation, there will be a period where each of us will have a chance to offer a seat into the group chalice to be magnetized with our group meditation and radiated to humanity as our meditative service. So let us prepare and over to you, Birgitta. Thank you. We just hold the silence a little while more. We recognize our spiritual community that has been active in this conversation. All of us who are present in this call. And those who are part of this group, but who are not with us on the call. And all the subtle, unseen and hierarchical beings bless and support our work. We align with the group heart, the heart of the chalice. And we align with our souls, with each other souls and with all souls. We align with the hierarchy and all those beings 
who aid our invocative and evocative efforts on behalf of humanity. Connect with energies of cancer. Neptune is the esoteric ruler in cancer. And Neptune connects with the Christ principle. Answer, the Christ avatar is called he whom the masses sense or he whom they anticipate. It's a function as the portal in, into incarnation, embodying the law of rebirth. of the cosmic processes of cyclic impulsion, intelligent, purposeful repetition, and conscious in-breathing and out-breathing. Man has incarnated through the many cycles of cancer and stands as a, as a disciple. He knows by heart that the whole is seen as one. We connect again with our topic for this cycle, evoking the Christ consciousness in humanity. Evoking the Christ consciousness in humanity. With love, we now offer our seats into the chalice. We invite all who feel to offer a seat thought to do so. Each one unmuting and speaking as they are moved to. We also honor those who choose not to speak, but who silently offer their formulated seats into the chalice. After each vocalized offering, 
we will allow each seat to rest in the silence for a while before the next one comes. So feel free to offer your seat thoughts now. Let us lead through the example of Christ consciousness in courage and joy. The need to be intuitive and telepathic to learn to be intuitive and telepathic. Christ's light be recognized by humanity and manifested in the lighted house. Every human being in or out of incarnation is a fragment of divinity, an outpost of divine Christ consciousness. We shift to a new collective reality, a new unity, through adorning consciousness of awareness of our interdependence and oneness in being. May all people learn to respect and love all beings in every kingdom known to them. Again, and yet again, must all the sons of men who are the sons of God seek for the golden antlered fawn representing the intuition and bear it to the holy place again and yet again. May the magnificent power 
of the spirit ascend from the depths of all hearts and build a raging fire of love for humanity and all beings. And um, let us tread that path, the evolutionary path, step by step, according to the goals of the soul, developing consciousness. Pain brings you rewards of Christ consciousness to humanity. Humanity, the Ajna Center, is now awakening and birthing Christ Consciousness, transmuting, transforming, and synthesizing love and light and radiating the principle of true freedom. We draw together the seeds within the chalice, allowing them to vibrate and resonate within the embracing light of the group vessel. We see the resonance of our combined seeds filling the chalice and vitalizing its radiant light 
enhancing the beauty and wisdom of its tone as that tone flows forth into the world, expressing on the mental, astral, and etheric planes, radiating to all receptive hearts and minds. We seal our work together, sounding the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the mind, into the human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out and may seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power Restore the plan on earth. Ooh. 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 